I'm not really sure where our summer's gone. It's wet and it's cold and not summer-like at all. But today we're continuing working on the cubby house for the kiddos. Well, Paul's going to be, I'm probably going to stay dry. Um, but we've got like five days left till Christmas, so hopefully we can finish it for the kids to unwrap on Christmas Day. coming along really well and I wanted to show you the amazing view the kids have from in here look at that it's pretty cool because it's so high up and we're on such a steep slope much of this is going to be blocked off but we do have a window this one down here we can go into this wall where the little kitchen will be and then They'll have a rock climbing wall, slide, and a few swings, and a hammock. So pretty cool hideout and retreat for the kids. I've picked a nice big bowl of berries for dessert. To go on our rhubarb tart, which I also picked from the garden. And in here we have some roasted carrots. Oh, you're getting all foggy. Roasted carrots and roasted beets to go with our dinner. Cover crop is just about all gone. You can see parts of it poking out on the sides, but the chickens have eaten this all in about three days, so it's all gone. We've been feeding them scraps from the pub to make up for it, and they'll keep getting that. Um, we don't feed any of our chickens grain. We don't feed, feed our pigs grain either. They live off. Um, the pigs live off um, fruit and bread that we get from the supermarket and then we feed the veggies to the chickens um, in the other section of our garden. There's some more cover crop there growing up for next time. Um, we are growing our pumpkins over this so this is mainly to keep the weed suppressed and to fix nitrogen into the soil. This is the veggie patch that we're eating from at the moment. I often get people say that they're jealous of the space they get to plant in but realistically this is the size that you could have in a backyard and this is the size that I did have in my previous backyard in suburbia and you can certainly eat out of quite comfortably a space like this. You might not be eating 100% from your garden but you would be eating the majority from your garden. And like I said this is where we're eating from. This is where I'm picking my beets and my carrots and my kale. Um, all my lettuce, the tomatoes are coming along well. We'll have tomatoes in about a month's time if the weather picks up. Um, onions are coming from here. The onions are coming from here. I had a heap of garlic in here too. I've got some eggplants growing. Um, got some more broccoli at the back there. So you can certainly plant quite a varied um, crop in a garden that is quite small in size. I wanted to come into our orchard just to check on the potatoes that I planted here. We're using them as a cover crop, not really a cover crop, but an understory in our orchard. Um, and we're planting them in our swales. Now our swales aren't huge, but um, they are there just to break the water just a little bit so it can start seeping into the earth. When we've got a bit more time and less projects on our list, we will um, change this up a bit and we'll create bigger swales to um, catch and divert the water. So these are some of the potatoes, so they seem to be doing pretty good. I think I planted five in each row, but only four have come up, but that's okay. And over here, we have the sweet potatoes. And this one seems to do, be doing pretty good as well. I could probably be taking um, cuttings off the vine to create new slips to plant more plants. But um, I actually found some sweet potatoes in the green waste bins that we're collecting. I planted them so hopefully 
they grow to collect slips from. This is what I'm looking forward to most, quince. Looks like something's tried to bite it, some sort of parrot. But hopefully I get to harvest those before they eat them for me because I'm really, really excited about quince. They're really delicious. You do need to cook them or stew them, but they are absolutely wonderful um, with a bit of ice cream or cream. Yum. We have another duck sitting. She's got about 10 eggs underneath her. So hopefully we'll add some more ducklings to our collection. Madeline. Hi Madeline. Hey, you're a good mama. And you're not a good mama. Sorry. You suck. You hungry Cooper? My bucket of hot water. And I've got my milk. I pop it in so that it warm up. And then I'll go grab Cooper soon and give him his bottle. So for those of you that don't know why we feed um, Cooper while he still has a mum here, and that's not re like outright rejecting him because you won't let him nurse. Every time he goes to nurse, she'll kick him away. And if we take him, you know, to another pen, she won't bleat like the other sheep do. If we do that with their sheep or their lambs, um, they'll get really worried and I'll start making lots of noise, but she doesn't make any noise. So we put him on the bottle because he would have died if we didn't bottle feed him. And he was getting really lethargic. He wasn't getting the milk from her. Even when we're holding her so he could drink from her, nurse from her, um, he wasn't getting enough. So we don't know if she's a first time ewe. We don't know because we inherited the sheep when we moved into the farm just over six months ago. Um, and she's a lot smaller than the other ewes and her teeth, um, she hasn't got as many teeth as the other ewes, which is an indication of age. They get two, four, eight, and then I don't know how it goes from there, but and then they start to wear down and you can tell their age. Paul knows a lot more about that because he's had sheep all his life. Um, he's worked on farms with sheep um, and his dad's really knowledgeable in sheep as well. So um, he can tell roughly how old they are and we, found, we thought this ewe was actually a lamb that maybe we could have eaten. Um, not that we eat the girls, we eat the boys. Um, but we thought she was um, just a fresh lamb, she was so small, but turns out she is um, a little bit older, she's about two or three, and we assume this is her first lamb because she has no idea what to do. Um, so we're just helping her out. We will take him off her because we don't think he would survive out in the pasture with her. Um, we have 54 acres and about 20 of those are for the sheep at the moment. Um, and I think being such a big area, they'll get lost. Um, or he'll get lost. So we are going to take him back to our house paddock right. and raise him ourselves to be a pet because we can't eat something that we've bottle raised and bonded with. But I think his bottle should be just about warm enough. So I'm going to test it and feed him. There's 
such funny looking sheep. They're so scraggly because they are hair sheep, which means that they don't produce wool, they produce hair. So you don't have to shear them because it falls off. Um, but they rub themselves up against fences and trees and you can see wool or hair scattered all around the floor against trees and fences. Up here, you should see the pretty little. Um, along the fences. Crazy sheep. Look at them all. They're all there. Hi guys. Yep, hello. They're waiting for me to spill some chaff so they can eat it. Is this why you've come to see me? That's it for today guys, we'll see you tomorrow.